what is good we're back we got a special treat we got austin gonna maybe get him two times this week air horns oh fresh crack one or the other no jason like the back of my hand <laughs> guy switched it up he did switch it up did switch it up fresh crack for austin shout out saving saving us when we had a little emergency this week so appreciate you austin we're gonna do a little moves to make gonna talk a little chuba hubbard and brooks gonna Grr, talk rah, rah. Going to talk a little Tampa Bay backfield and going to talk a little Tyrone Tracy for your pleasure today. Austin, what's good, man? How you doing? Uh, doing well, man. Always always good to be talking ball with the FF Dynasty. Shout out to Big D, man. Hope you're doing well, brother. We got to get him back on here soon, man. We got to do a little tripod action with him. It's, it's been a minute, but Let's I'm do ready it. to jump right into it. Let's do it. Chuba obviously signed a new deal, which had a whole bunch of Twitter clutching their pearls and gasping mid and obviously you know we don't know where brooks is but i think that's a good way to lead this show off let's let's touch on chuba's value and how we feel about him moving forward and then we could take a look at where brooks value stands right now you know after the the chuba signing maybe stirs up some concerns for jonathan brooks long term so we'll start off with some basic information here on what kind of season chuba's putting down rb6 right now 16.2 points per game PFF's got him at an 86.3 rush grade, the sixth overall. He's got 161 attempts. That's good for fifth. 818 yards. That's good for third. Uh, his yards per attempt, 5.1. Strong. Tied for eighth. Six TDs. Seventh. Three fumbles on the year. So few fumbles there. You'd like to see him clean that up a little bit. Missed tackles force. He's got 30 of those. That's ninth. Rushes of 10 yards or more, 19. Uh, that's tied for seventh. Rushes over 15 yards or more, 12. That's tied for second. Breakaway percentage, 33%. Uh, that's 14th. Targets, way more than I think a lot of people suspect. 34 targets. That's ninth. 30 receptions. That's seventh. Yards after contact per attempt, 3.60. That's seventh overall. So Chuba, far from mid right now on a on the middest of mid to terrible teams all of those things right now really really in chuba's favor which is i think why they gave him a contract at the end of the day you have a franchise who's grasping at an identity right they're trying to build a culture right there canales is trying to figure something out and you know they benched bryce at the beginning of the year they brought dalton in bryce looks okay on the back you know it's nothing great but enjoying football out there and doesn't look like he's completely broken right now but chuba seems it, it seems like he's going to be the catalyst of this this kind of movement from canales right they get rid of deontay johnson which you know they wanted a guy that they could build the offense around it didn't work out because the offense is broken uh they can't find a guy who could pass the ball and dalton a little banged up bryce we'll see so they got rid of him but i think that's really good moving forward for this culture right Deontay doesn't seem like a great locker room guy. If he was, he'd still be on the Steelers, right? They're, yeah. they're dying. They were dying for it, too. So I, I find this very interesting. I don't find it as huge of a deal as everybody else does because I know Canales wants to run the ball. You saw what he did last year in Tampa. He comes from Seattle where, you know, we've seen them put a big emphasis on that. Uh, Kenny Walker and Sharbs uh, for, for a bit of his time there. And then last year you saw Rashad White get a ton of carries, a ton of receptions, while he was inefficient with the, the carries, he's an excellent receiver. And you're seeing all that come over into Chuba and him be very efficient with his touches on, on a much worse team. But, you know, you don't have to pay a quarterback right now. You're, you're either going to get a, a mid quarterback like a Darnold or something who comes back who you're not going to have to give a huge contract to, or you're going to draft another quarterback. You can afford to pay Chuba Hubbard. Now, what does that say for Jonathan Brooks? I'm not sure. We don't even know if Jonathan Brooks is good or not. That's really my thing. You, we know that Chuba can operate this offense at a really high level, even on a bad team. So to me, it's important, I think, for the culture of Carolina to kind of have somebody like Chuba to maybe lean on for the next few years. We've seen two-headed rushing attacks really work in this league. I mean, Tampa, one that we're going to talk about right now, is, is working with Irving and, and White. We, we've got Detroit who works that way. I think Sharbs and Kenny 3-6 could work that way. Uh, and we've seen it over the course of, of time and, and in the league, it, it evolving into definitely being a little bit more of a of a two back scenario here. And while it's not, you know, insane money, it's OK money for, for Chuba, about eight million a year, which 
you know, it seems like a lot. It's not it's not a you know, it's not a cheap contract, but it's not. a Oh, my God, they're paying him a ton. They're not paying him double digits. They're not paying him 12, you know, eight, you know, a, a good deal for for a guy who I feel like is a big part of what this organization is going to be trying to do kind of moving forward. What are your thoughts in general here on the Chuba Brooks thing? Are you out on Brooks? Are you out on Chuba? Is this a buy, sell, hold situation for you, Austin? How are, how are you feeling about this newfound long-term deal for Chuba Hubbard and the Carolina Panthers? Yeah, so I, I think that, if anything, right now, Jonathan Brooks is is a screaming buy. I'm not telling you that Brooks is going to go on to have immense success in the NFL. I'm not telling you that he's going to go be a top five, top ten running back moving forward. But I am telling you that I don't know how much cheaper he could get right now. We don't even know if, if Jonathan Brooks is a real human being. Have you seen him? Has anybody <laughs> seen Jonathan Brooks? I, I, we don't even see him suit up. Nothing, man. It's It feels like, oh, he'll be ready week one. He'll be ready uh, within the first few weeks. We're going to week 11. What are, they have a bye this week, correct? Actually, I, I, I don't know if that's correct. I'm not sure. Regardless, we haven't seen him yet. And, I, man, I, I remember looking at my phone and I got a notification Chuba Hubbard extended 40 years, $33 million. Casey, I was like, there is no way this just happened, right? Like, like God bless Chuba. Very happy for him. I don't know if he's quite deserving of this much money. He got, he got paid again. Good for him. I was just, I didn't see this coming, like completely caught me off guard. I'm looking at the logistics of his contract, the cap it three mil this year, five mil the following year. Then there's a potential out. I'm not sure if this is a two-year deal. The the following years, you got a six mil cap hit, a nine mil, and then a 10 mil cap hit. So the cap hit gradually increases every single season. It's something to keep in mind, um, right? Because a lot of times when you look at a contract on the surface, it can be very misleading. Dynasty, this sucks. Like straight up, it's it's not appealing. It's, this is not an ideal situation, obviously, for Jonathan Brooks, but the Carolina Panthers, they knew that this was an investment, a long-term investment, right? Jonathan Brooks, that is, right? They knew that they were going to have to baby him, and they knew that they were maybe going to take a step forward this year with Bryce, maybe get a little bit better, still miss the playoffs. I think that was, obviously, they, they, they want to make the playoffs, but I, I kind of feel like they knew in the back of their minds, like, look, we'll take a step forward. We're building something here. And Jonathan Brooks, we can take our time with. And, and now, with the current situation, right? Like they're what three and seven. Why, why would they rush him back? Right. Their season right. is practically over. Uh, so, uh, this, this move just still caught me off guard and, uh, Casey to, you know, to answer your question in terms of value, Jonathan Brooks, a buy low, uh, tuba Hubbard kind of feels like a hold. I, I don't, I don't even think he's, he's a sell high man. Like, just enjoy winning with him for the rest of the season because I think he's going to c- continue to be a rock star. Yeah, well, well, we'll jump on the value real quick. I want to go touch back on that contract real quick. You know, I, I I think it's a good point to always, you know, point those things out of what the contract is. Um, you know, it seems like it's it's reassuring Chuba, like, hey, we're 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 here for you. We're investing in you. When we get to that 30, 29 year old area where you're getting 10 million, they'll probably restructure or do something different by that point in time. Uh, but what it does is it, it gives you a safety net to say, hey, we're we're investing in you. We're showing you some love. We're going to give you something and, and we'll see what happens with Brooks. So yeah. I, I view it as a win win for the Panthers, for the dynasty community. I, I do think it, it could potentially show you a nice buy low window for for Jonathan Brooks here. Again, we're not even sure if Jonathan Brooks is any good. Uh, we, we think he is. We hope he is. We think the situation's good. I think there's room for both of these guys to succeed kind of on the field at the same time. If they can go out and, and invest in this o-line even a little bit more than they did this year they brought in the two guards let's see him invest you know go another step further really invest in this o-line and, and follow maybe the lions track to building something right invest in that o-line you got two guys you run dominant scheme and then you know use Leggett and and you know that's the other thing they did they got rid of Deontay and now, now you're going to see what you have in Leggett you're going to see what you have in Coker you can kind of let this young nucleus kind of build together you're going to get Brooks out there at some point and get all these guys together uh, but I, I, I kind of really like what Canales is doing. He was put in a tough situation, and I think he's going to come out the back half of this year in, in a good trajectory kind of moving forward where this was just a dumpster fire where it was like, who's even going to take this job? And it started off rocky in those first few weeks when you couldn't get anything out of Bryce, and he looked terrible. And now he, he seemed to kind of reset the uh, the whole deal for Bryce Young and these young Panthers here kind of moving down the line. So anyway... 
Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Let's take a peek at, at Jonathan Brooks's value right now. You said potentially buy low. I would I would maybe tend to agree. Let's see what Dynasty Daddy has to say over the last day or two for some Jonathan Brooks value. Calvin Ridley, half point tight end premium, full PPR. Calvin Ridley for Jonathan Brooks in two thirds. I mean, that's all day long, right? Which side? I'm sorry. Which side are the thirds on? The Jonathan Brooks on. side. So Jonathan Brooks two thirds for Calvin Ridley. Give me oh Brooks. God, yeah, give me give me Brooks. Give me Brooks. Yeah, that's a that's an easy one. So Bijan, a first, a second, and Brooks. I'll take the Bijan side on that one. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Brooks and a oh, third, oh, yeah. or Tyrone Tracy. It's so wild that this is a question ten <laughs> weeks later. It, it's so crazy. It is so crazy. Um, I just I just want to stop and say that. Oh my God, man. Am I am I out of my mind for for leaning Tyrone Tracy Jr. Well, you're seeing the production on the field, and, and we're going to get to Tracy at, at the end of this show here. But I think I'm still keeping with the pedigree of Brooks here and, and what, what could potentially be. But, you know, hey, I, I, I can see it. You, you got a guy who is seeing the results now of what you wanted to see from Brooks, and he's trading it straight up for Tracy. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I can understand that to, to a point. So in scrolling through here, what it seems is though you ha- here's a ca- straight up Calvin Ridley for Brooks trade. It seems like you got some guys who are, are saying, hey, I'm I'm doubling down on Brooks. And then other guys are like, hey, I'm out. Take take what I can get. Jonathan Taylor for Brooks, Olave and a two. Oh, man. All those players have been so frustrating this year between Olave. Even uh, I, I don't think, know, man, maybe, uh, maybe maybe give me Jonathan Taylor. I don't feel great about it. It's close. It seems like I should take the Taylor side there, but I don't mind the the pieces on the other side. If you're kind of in like a hey, I'm a, I'm gonna rebuild this and and get some de- get yeah. some get some diversification and pieces that could really go up in value because they're down a little bit. Jonathan Brooks in a first or Calvin or uh, Alvin Kamara in a second. Uh, Jonathan Brooks in a first for me. I mean, obviously, if you're if you're a, if you're trying to win right now this year, Alvin Kamara could certainly get you there. But any anything after this year is quite a question mark for the you know age of alvin kamara kamara's a stud. I, uh, kamara is just, i mean he's a bona fide stud he's been he's a stud. maybe having his best season he's crushing i don't know if it's his best I, season but i kind of want to lean some... K- K- kamara in the two there but of course it, it definitely depends on your situation obviously if you're a contender you go get kamara if if you're in full-blown rebuild jonathan brooks in a first would be an awesome return jonathan brooks and a first or cmc cmc <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like you still got to go CMC, man. Somebody hit me up the other day. They were like, what, what do you think CMC's dynasty value is right now? I'm getting offered a first and a second. And I'm I'm thinking if I'm pivoting off CMC, I probably want I probably want two firsts and then decent change on top of it. That's probably my asking price, not just like garbage. I want some valuable pieces on top of two firsts. I don't know if I'm going to get it. That's what I want. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the Chuba Hubbard side and see where where his value currently lies, because I would I would agree with you. I'm I'm not out on on Brooks by any means. I, I would be buying in, you know, if I can get a little discount on it and I'm, I'm sending every league I'm in, I'd like to send an offer for Brooks, you know, a two and an, and an older running back and see if I can get it done. But the Chuba side, I think a lot of people would say, hey, you know, we're going to try to sell here with this bit of information of saying hey he's he's got a new contract he's going to stay around he's been very productive this year so let's see let's see what the value is there i'm 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 kind of in in your category there i'm probably holding chuba and buying jonathan brooks because i do maintain that i think this offense can can it wants to be a run first offense you see like look what arizona is doing right now right arizona is kind of morphing into this Hey, we're going to run the ball a decent amount. Now, they're not using two guys to do that with. They're using an old Jonathan or an old James Conner. But, you know, teams can go different ways. And I do think fundamentally Canales wants to run the ball. He's even said this as much that he wants to run the ball. So I do think both of these guys can operate in this offense. Brooks, again, remains to be seen what we can get from him. But but you know, pretty good re- receiver, good speed, good move. We're, we're, we're really excited about what we could see. But Chuba's been doing it on this team. So 
probably a hold for me. Now, there could be a, a sell window here if somebody's going to give me a lot for them, but I don't know that that's going to be the case. So let's let's go see what Chuba Hubbard is, is bringing to the table here. So Najee Harris and a two or Chuba Hubbard. Give me Chuba. Give me Chuba Hubbard all day. Oh, for sure. A second and a third or Chuba Hubbard. Oh, Chuba, man. Yeah, I, I'd probably need, realistically, if I could get a mid first, which I, I bet you you can't. I don't think you can. That's probably where I'd be at, Casey, where I'm like, okay, take Chuba off my hands. Chase Brown, Chuba first and two thirds. So Chase Brown and Chuba Hubbard or the first and two thirds. Chase Brown and Chuba, I, I think, is is definitely more valuable. Unless, unless you can guarantee that first to be like a top two, top right. three pick, right? Yeah, top the, four I'm, first. I'm maybe, take, maybe we have a little um, bit more juice on it, but I, I, those, I like those two guys a lot. Yeah, they're good players, man. Chase Brown looks legit as well. He he's been a hell of an ROI, and he was great in college. I I don't think that Cincinnati wants to just pivot off of him anytime soon. Chuba Jerry Judy for a first. Uh, we just don't know a the context of said r- first. random. Yeah, I'm probably sticking with Chuba right now. But like you said, if it's a top five six first, it's two quarterback, so that that's a little juicier. Right, and it's a twenty five first. Right. You know, 25 super flex first, you know, that for, sure, for sure. The top six picks are, should be pretty good. And in whatever you think about this quarterback class, like, right. doesn't matter. There's going to there, be, there's, there's at least one or two good quarterbacks or look, per- perceived decent quarterbacks. And then me and Austin just talked about, I mean, you can get to 10 running backs pretty freaking easy. And there's at least three or four wide receivers who are going to be, you know, people are going to be excited about. Right. So. I think your top six, seven picks are, are pretty solid. So, you know, let's call that let's call that pick six or Chuba Hubbard this year. I'll take the pick. How about I pay you a fourth and you keep Jerry Judy? I don't want him <laughs> on my roster. Jerry that Judy's works. been okay with uh with Jameis. Uh, it's hard to like Jerry Judy. It is was, hard to like him. He's trash. <laughs> he's been he's been, he's been all right with Jameis. Been, been decent with Jameis. Really all three receivers. He have was been okay decent. with with Watson as well. A lot of 20 25 first, 26 first, 26 first, 26 first. So a lot of 26 first for Chuba Hubbard out here if we're going straight up values. A 2, a 3 and a 4 for Chuba and Mac Jones. Two quarterback. I'll take Chuba. 26 first or Chuba? Super flex. Again, it's just just, just random first, Super right? Flex, just- yeah, random first. 26 of course it's right yeah how could we know is the 26 yeah. way better than the 25 i don't know give me give me chuba man maybe i'm crazy just just give me chuba yeah yeah so let me let, let me go win now seti till cedric tillman or chuba hubbard look he's Ooh. been great there, there's no denying that i i still would prefer chuba i i feel you know what maybe, maybe i'm a little crazy but i i think chuba he feels safer to me i think that i've seen a long enough body of work where i'm more comfortable with him, I, I believe it. I feel like it's more authentic, and and no disrespect to Cedric Tillman because I like, I do like him. I liked him as a prospect, and and I, he's he's been crushing. There's there's no doubt about it. He was what the wide receiver one in all of fantasy for, over last, the past last three, three weeks. He's been yeah yeah. That doesn't include this past week, the three prior. But shout out to uh, Cedric Tillman, man. Yeah, I, I'd still I'd still lean Chuba. What about you, Casey? Mm, that's a tough one for me because I I do really like with with. What's going on with the quarterback situation? Well, we don't really know in Cleveland, uh, but he does seem like uh, you know you don't. There's no reason for them to go find another number one at this point. I mean, people do stupid shit, but like they got it. They, they <laughs> he's obviously really good. I guess I slight lean Chuba, but I'm it's it's getting real close to Tillman for me there. So all right. Let's uh, let's move off the Panthers' backfield. Let's go to Tampa's backfield here and and take a closer look and see what Bucky Irving's doing for you and see what Rashad White's doing for you. So Rashad White started off, you know, really good week one, and then since then has kind of faded out. And then, but week seven on, we've seen a really good resurgence of of solid PPR points from Rashad White, right? Uh, and now, does that correspond with Godwin and Mike Evans going down? I, I would, I would think so. Mm-hmm. Correct. You know, you can see if you look at the weekly snap share and the weekly target share. You know, if you if you go over to the target share first, you can see. You know, week one he had a twenty percent target share. Week three he had an eighteen, but in, in and then week five he had twelve and a half. But in between there, he had a five and a six percent target share. And since Godwin and Evans have been out, like. 
it hasn't gone like completely crazy, but the the low floor of the fives and six seem to have evaporated. And I, you know, I would assume that you're going to kind of see that for the rest of the season, and it has seemingly correlated to uh, some really solid fantasy points uh, when you look at the week over week scoring for Rashad White here. So, you know, is it is it a good time to get out on on Rashad White as as you know if you can hook somebody into looking at the actual points scored for him. What would be the selling price for Rashad White for you here? Or or are you in on Rashad White over the last few years or the last few weeks? Because it's been 29, 15, 12, and 19 for Rashad White and Bucky since week seven, 18, 16, 15, 6, and then 17 points. So they're coexisting. It's working. You know, it's Kate Otten, it's Rashad White, and it's Bucky Irving crushing for you. So what are your thoughts? How are you playing this this offense kind of moving forward to starting with Rashad White? If you could sell, would you sell? Or are you saying, hey, I'm in. Rashad White, this is what he does. What's your thoughts here? Yeah, so I, I thought you touched on a really good point. That being, obviously, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans out for the past several weeks. That I believe is is you know has a strong correlation to you know just Tampa simply utilizing their running backs at a, at a higher rate, whether it's in the pass game, whether it's in the run game, whatever it may be, right? You're seeing an uptick in volume, of course, right? They, it's next man up, and uh, we're we're seeing Tampa have not only two running backs that are producing, but we saw Sean Tucker look like an absolute dog for for what, a week or two. <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's hilarious. It's like, could you put me or Jay Wayne back there? Would we be decent? I don't know, but uh, maybe it's just the Buck system. No, uh, no. In all seriousness, man, I think Rashad White is kind of always been the same guy, right? A player who can produce for NFL and fantasy purposes, but he's always going to be relatively inefficient, right? Not the greatest vision, not the greatest runner, a strong pass catcher, wildly durable, solid frame. Obviously, this is a warm take. I think Bucky Irving is a better. Not only fantasy player, I believe he's a better NFL player already for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Casey, you're asking dynasty value. And, and right now in season, it, it's a very slippery slope. Like this is very tricky because uh, it felt like Bucky was just, I'm sorry. It felt like Rashad White completely left for dead about three, four weeks ago. Like nobody mm-hmm. wanted him. Yeah. And now it's like, damn, if, if you bought, if you bought the dip about a month ago, you were, you're chilling. Like you, you've been very, very pumped. You, you know, you're you're able to start Rashad White every week. He's like you mentioned. He's he's scoring in the mid teens. Uh, that that's awesome. Uh, but I want I want to touch on Bucky a little bit, man. Like we're seeing Bucky produce at this rate in just the first few games of his NFL career. Don't you think he's going to continue to build off of that? Don't you think that he's going to continue to simply improve and just you know learn the craft just just improve as not only a runner, but even more as a pass catcher. I know he led college football last year in receptions, uh, you know, all running backs. That is, I just, I just think this kid is, is on a great path at the moment. And uh, I, I don't really see why he would regress. So um, if anything, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I don't, I don't really even view this period as like a nice sell high window for Rashad. I think it's more of like, I think it's more of like a, a good, buy low window for Bucky, if that makes sense, because of Rashad's success. Yes, unfortunately, I think because of Bucky being young and Bucky putting up the points in the last few weeks and really overall throughout the season, he's been pretty decent as far as points scored for uh, Bucky Irving. But if you if you look at like kind of the snap share from what's going on all, all year long, you're seeing Rashad White in that in that deep red. I know you can't see this, Austin, but the viewers yep. at home, it's in deep red pretty much every week, which means high percentage of, of snap share there. And then the one week that he missed, he saw Bucky get his. But Bucky's producing with, you know, 35. And let's just go week seven on and or week six where when he got the start because because Rashad White was out. You know, you're seeing Bucky getting 35.9 percent to Rashad's 47. Uh, you're seeing Bucky get 41 to Rashad's 55. Uh, Bucky's 30 to Rashad's 65. Bucky's 48 to to Rashad's uh, 58. Now, if you broke that into actual touches and carries, it might tell you a slightly different story. But it seems like they're 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 at least defining roles for those two guys, kind of moving forward. And I would love to be able to get Bucky uh, as a as a buy low window here. But unfortunately, like I said, it's from week I believe that's six. He's 18, 16, 15, 6, and 17. And then, you know, the, even before that, he had an 11, a 12, a 9.6 his first game. 
he's got a two and a five in there, but like really as a rookie running back with somebody who already had an incumbent in there, I feel like it's going to be really hard to pry Bucky Irving from, from somebody right now. You know, so that brings me full circle then, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump back to Rashad White for a sec or, or after this, but would, is Bucky, are you buying, let's say you can't buy low on Bucky, but are, are you buying medium on Bucky here? Or are you going to say, hey, he's done really good. Let me go. This is a guy I invested like a third round pick for. If I could get two twos for him right now, I might sell Bucky Irving. No, I mean, uh, for me, if, if I own Bucky, I'm holding. Um, And, and I, I think that's my biggest takeaway here. I, I think Bucky is, he's just, he's shown, he's shown it, man. He, he looks good. He like the tape looks good as well. Right. It's not just the, yeah. uh, the, the stats, uh, but I, I would like to hold Bucky. I'd, I'd like to even buy him. If I could get him again, at, at even a little bit of a discount right now, based off of what we've seen from Rashad white starting to produce more. If I could take that and run with it and buy him, I would do it. And uh, the, now like I would assume you want to pivot and get to the price. Right? Yeah. Let's, like, let's where go do Bucky you... Irving first and a third. Super flex. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always super flex. flex correct. One point five tight end premium. Bucky Irving today got traded for a first and a third. You turning that trade down? I got to take the first and third. I think. Yeah, that, Jay, I'm with you, Jay Wayne. Okay. Twenty five first and third too. Yeah. Here's a first for Demario Douglas, Bucky, and a second. Yeah, I feel like the uh, feel like the values on the the Bucky side there. I don't I don't hate that side there. Uh, this is two quarterbacks, Bo Nix or Penix, Irving, Ayuk, and a first. I'm taking the fucking backup <laughs> side on that. Yeah, one. yeah. Um, you heard I, Bo Nix. Or sorry, you heard Penix. It was over. Well, I mean, I like I like Nix, but I mean, that's good. That's that's a great trade right there. Yeah, no, that's wild. awesome. That's a great trade. Bucky Irving and two twos super flex for Brock Purdy. I'll take Bucky Purdy Irving and two twos for Purdy. Yeah. Scoop up yeah, that get, Purdy butterfly, baby. Yeah, yeah, give me Brock Purdy, Purdy instead of beautiful. Here's Bucky for two twos. You, you're staying, right? I That's can keep what, Bucky there. And keep Bucky, Bucky there. Bucky for a 26 first. Let me get that 25, oh, man. Doc. Yeah, that's tough. So, yeah, that, that's real close. Um, Bucky and a two or Chuba? My God, man. I, I want to lean Chuba. Am I crazy? No, nah, I, I I don't mind it. I mean, it's kind of not all that different of a situation of what could be brewing in Carolina, yeah. I guess. Or Carolina, yeah, yeah. All right, let's look at the Rashad White side of this and and, and gauge a value on him and see see where we're at. Because it does, like you said, if, you, if you'd scooped in and, and you bought him low when it was just looking bad and then they had some injuries and look... Mike Evans isn't getting any younger. Evans is a free agent. Otten looks great, and and he'll be around for a minute. And but really, at the end of the day, Baker looks really good, and that's that's the biggest part of this Bucks offense where I'm not I'm, I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> well, it's Christmas time, right? A little Home Alone. Um, there was a dip. If you bought the dip, it was good. Now it seems like you could sell on the dip or kind of rebuy Bucky Irving a little bit, or uh, sorry, uh, Rashad White a little bit here. So I, I'm I'm curious to think on on what where we're where we're standing on the Rashad White value train here. Um, how about Rashad White or a two? That seems awful cheap. Yeah, I'd probably rather Rashad White there. Um, again, like QB. yeah, again, like if if I'm gonna sell Rashad White, I don't know, man. I'm gonna probably try and like if I have to add on something small, like let's just say Jerry Conehead Judy. <laughs> Whatever it takes, I gotta add a little bit to get that first. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm tear up. That's the name of the game. I'm really. mostly in sell mode here with Rashad White, and it's not because I dislike Rashad White per se. I just I feel like Bucky's coming for the for the rushing role, and I don't. As far when when they get receivers back, McMillan's missed some time here. When their Evans is back, and and they either re-sign Godwin or bring somebody else in, I feel like you know we were gonna see the Rashad White and and some targets get gobbled up where that's what Rashad White made his living off of last year uh, and getting just a ton of inefficient run where Bucky's being really efficient with his run. So I think I might be looking to sell. So let's find the price that we could get out on. Michael Pittman or Rashad White? I'll take Pittman. Yeah. I don't hate that trade. Both guys kind of down. Well, White was down. Now maybe a slight uptick for somebody getting excited about it and Pittman real down injured I think for a long part of this year probably should have been you're the Colts fan what do you say 
Yeah, no, Pitt, Pittman, and I feel very confident in it. Uh, Pittman got that three-year, $70 million contract extension, right? He's not going anywhere. Uh, he's one of the team captains. He's a leader for that franchise. And uh, I think that, you know, aside from Josh Downs, you could you could make the argument that every other Colts wide receiver is probably a pretty good buy low right now. Um, I think I just – I would imagine the Colts have to do – it's inevitable that they increase it, just passing volume in the, in the near future, uh, you know. And and I, I feel safe with Pittman long term. I don't. I know his ceiling is not like Jamar Chase high, obviously, but I know I do believe that he still has a few more thousand yard seasons yeah, in him. We've seen him be good. right, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I'm just I'm I worry that obviously last season was an absolute perfect case scenario the highest of high outcomes for Rashad White last year. What was the RB4 in fantasy? He crushed. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he was great, and he got a lot of volume. So it seems, looking through these trades in the last two days, it seems like the market's still pretty depressed on Rashad White. Now, here, Drake May for Rashad White, 2QB, that's all day. You're correct, four last year. Um, You know, Rashad White for a two, we've seen a bunch of that. Rashad White for Wandell Robinson, that seems a little nutty to me. It's light. Rashad White for Diggs. Might stick with Rashad White on that one. Godwin on all day. Godwin or Rashad White? That's too easy. Give me Godwin all day. What, Godwin what are side? people doing? Yeah. Injured 29-year-old Godwin? Still he's, good? Isn't he 28? Well, he was 28. He just turned 29? <laughs> I think he's about to be 29. Oh. Well, that changes everything. Yeah. No, I, I, I still think I'm taking the chance on Godwin there. Yeah, man. Come on. He'll be 29 in February. God one. Yeah, All right, here's here's the last one on white. So I'm going to say market down on white. If you're a competitor and you could trade a two for for white, I don't hate it for to finish the season up. Here's a here's a trade, a first and a second, and we're going to call this a competitor, right? Because I think that's the only way you make this trade. A first, a 25 first, and a 25 second. Let's say right now you're you're 112. You know, you're the you're the the, the guy in first or second, or you got the most points you're scored. The, the big doggy. You're the big dog, and you're eating. And, Are you taking and food from the medium size? And let's say you did dogs, lose. Or? Let's say you did lose Godwin, or uh, you know who, who went down. Who else went down Nico's recently? Nico's been out. Nico's been out. Yeah, who? Let's say you lost a piece over the last few weeks or something. Cooper Cup and Rashad White, or your first and second if you're a top two three team right now heading into the playoffs. Is that too much of a win now price tag to pay? Or because I'm down Cooper to pay Cup. a two for Cup if I'm going into you know, if I'm if I'm a really good strong team and he's going to be my third wide receiver or second flex or something like that, like if I got a good team, I'll, I've got twos out there in most leagues right now. Four Cooper Cup sitting on people's desks, making them say no to me. So I, I'm down with trading that and then Rashad White. So it's like it seems a little risky and and you don't want to pay and it, it, one quarterback though mm. in this one. Mm-hmm. So little little depreciation on the first, right? So like you yeah, say, so one ten, one eleven, one twelve, or Rashad White, Cooper Cup. Same thing with your two. What's your thoughts here, Austin? Yeah, we got Cooper Cup, Rashad White, and a late first and second projected. Mm-hmm. This Kate, like I think this is so close, man. Yeah. Um, seems close. For some reason, I want to lean the picks, but they seem safer. I, I understand sure. it. I wouldn't be mad at it if I saw that trade go down in a league, but ah, super flex for sure. The picks, one QB. <laughs> Flip a coin. What, what's in your, what's in your plums? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the picks. All right. Let's do our last guy tonight. Let's go, Tyrone Tracy. I think he's so interesting right now. Um, <laughs> weeks, weeks five through ten, he's been uh, RB ten, I believe. Fourteen point nine points per game. Uh, he's got 107 attempts, and this is for this whole season. That's twenty fourth. He's got 545 yards. That's 20th. His yards per attempt, 5.1. Very good. That's the whole season. Three TDs, two fumbles. Yards after contact per attempt, 3.22. That's 17th. Missed tackles force, 20. So his missed tackles force per attempt are super high. Tied for 24th is runs of 10 yards or more, 14. That's tied for 16th. 15 yards or more. Uh, he's got seven of those. That's tied for 12th. And remember, this is a low attempt. This 24th in attempts. Uh, so that's pretty solid. Breakaway percentage, 35%. Uh, that's good for 11th. And then this is a converted wide receiver, right? And, and the, the thing that gets into the dynasty value a little bit with Tyrone Tracy is that he is like 25 already. That's not an exaggeration. He's like right around that. <laughs> he's like right around that age. That's not a big age. co-age. That's um, a real age. 
And I sometimes I'd be fucking around with people's age just because, you know, I just want to get a part that he's old. Simmons is old. Yeah. Should have been on a game years ago, but he can't go home because he hates his wife. Uh, it's a little Tommy boy for you. No, uh, that is not Tommy boy. That's uh, uh, sorry. Liar, liar, liar. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, Lots of people go to college. For, yeah. That's you know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I was thinking uh, that's when the whores come in. <laughs> that's Tommy boy. Um only 22 targets, but, you know, we'd like to see that as a converted wide receiver. So 22 targets, that's 31st. 18 receptions, that's for 30th. Haven't really got that part going with Tracy as much as maybe you would have thought it would have uh, as far as because of what his skill set is. But what you can really see here, when you look at Tyrone Tracy's snap share, and that is a really good illustration of kind of what's happened in New York, is Singletary had a hold of this thing. Week one, 72%, 82%, week two, 69.9% week three, 69.2% week four. And then week five, Singletary gets injured and practice, I believe, and misses two games. And since then, it's just the red wall over there. Um, shout out to Big Co. 59.2% um, for uh, week five, 83.8% uh, in week six. Uh, week seven, 67.3 percent there, 59.7 percent uh, week eight, 71 percent week nine and 79.5 percent week 10. So Tyrone's taken it on and Singletary's been back in the fold for week seven, week eight, week nine and week 10. So basically what that's illustrating is that in, in you know, a, a nice chart for you that Tyrone Tracy has taken this over and not given it back to Devin Singletary. Whilst Devin Singletary is still, you know, I think he had five yards of carry. I think he had like five carries for 40 yards this week. So Singletary still was a good player and was pretty decent in those couple of first couple of games. But hey, they're coaching for their job. They're putting this kind of more explosive big fella back in there. So Tyrone Tracy has really become a big part of this offense. Uh, and it's really... How much are you willing? Is this a, is this a found money and you keep? Is this a found money and you're saying, hey, trade it away because it's the Giants and we don't know what the hell's going to be going on in a year? Or is this just like, I'm so elated and you're never getting them from me? So what's your what's your play on Tyrone Tracy here as we pull up the value uh, for Tyrone Tracy on Dynasty Daddy? So right now I'm I'm just gonna hold Tracy right. I'm I'm not looking to sell. Uh, he's looked awesome this season, right? I know it, some people may have a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth after the overtime fumble in Germany when they lost to the Panthers, right? Hey, if you I know you can't take it away, but if you do, aside from that, over a hundred yards rushing, mm. he had uh, what was that off? We're taking away all rushing. the bad plays now. <laughs> <laughs> just one, just one. He was distraught. Nah, well, you take away all the negative runs. <laughs> He, I'm just he, being a jerk, he, guys. Okay, I'm just fucking around. Sorry, Austin. Continue, please. Sorry. No, you're good, man. He, I, I believe, was it Tracy's first full game as a starter? He had every single rushing attempt went for positive yardage. You can fact check me on that. I know that's correct. Bow, 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 bow. He, he's, uh, he looks great, man. Like there, there's no denying it. I think that the Giants, John Mara, their GM, just hit a home run. Or sorry, Joe Sheen rather hit a home run, and uh, you know, it, there's. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, obviously, crush it with neighbors. Hey, I feel like anybody would have taken neighbors yeah. there at six, but but good for him, you know, hitting on uh, Tyrone Tracy Jr. in uh, day three. Um, uh, Casey, getting back to your question, man, I I don't I, I don't want to sell Tracy if I'm getting like an early to mid first. I take him off my hands. Done. Two twos. But uh, if, if if we're talking like a late first, I'm not gonna lie. I, I really think I would still rather Tyrone Tracy Jr. because that's what I hope that first turns into, man. Why not just take it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Real real quick to, to your point. Four point seven percent of this was a thirty third team tweet that I uh, grabbed real quick. Four point seven percent of Tyrone Tracy's carries have gone for twenty yards or more this year. That's a crazy mm -hmm. rate. In, in case you're wondering, uh, and he's leading. Through week ten, rookie all rookie rushings with five hundred and forty five yards. Bucky Irving second, Jaden Daniels is third, and Bo Nix is fourth. Um, so that kind of tells you where you're at with with running backs from from the rookie class this year. That that's a that's a really good percentage on what you're seeing from Tyro and Tracy and the explosive plays. Also, Casey, uh, Tyro and Tracy Jr. turns twenty five in eleven days. Yeah, so I was I was right there uh, with with the age of Tracy. So that's kind of part of it that you have to play into it. You're getting a, a super young rookie, but 
also not a lot of high mileage. Not not. not a lot of uh, mileage on him as a running back, right? And some people really value that high tread. Um, high tread, I guess you could call it. We're always confused on which way you're going there. But he was a receiver and converted to the running back position his last year at Purdue, and so it has people excited. And, and you're seeing it pay dividends right now. So. Uh, I agree with you. If you could turn it into a first, you know, it is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good return. Here's Tyrone Tracy for a two, Josh Jacobs and a two or Tyrone Tracy and a four. Yeah, give me Jacobs and yeah. the two there. Tyrone Tracy or Troy Franklin and a two. What's that trade from May? What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's from today. <laughs> I know. Tyrone or two twos. One Tyrone. QB. I'm probably keeping Tyrone Tracy for two twos, right? I mean, is that crazy? No, Tyrone. That's did right. we already talk about Jonathan Brooks in the third or time? We, we we did in the Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. We can bring it back around. You, you said are everybody you, went Tracy. I think I would stuck stuck with the pedigree with Brooks, but you did literally say pedigree with Brooks. Yep. Yeah, Jordan Mason or a two or Tyrone Tracy. I mean, Masons look great and probably about the same age. Um, One carry with CMC back. Restricted free agent, I believe this year. Uh, Jordan Mason is so I could see somebody maybe trying to scoop him up. Are you really interested in Jordan Mason? Not as a Niner, though? Yeah, I mean, what I saw from Jordan Mason was great. But what we're seeing from Tyrone Tracy of most likely being the starter for the Giants next year is highly probable. So I'll, I'll take that side. We'll see where, if, if and when Mason lands anywhere. And I mean, there could be next week, knock on wood, CMC could be back out. You know, we've got one game from him and everybody's the value has been restored where there was no value on CMC. That's how this game works. Such a kids. long time. Derek Henry, let's say you're a winner. You're you're the same scenario I painted with the Cooper Cup trade. Ty, or Derek Henry or Tyrone Tracy and a two and a three. Let's say for the championship run this year. What are you doing? One QB uh, or Superflex? Superflex. J- Jay, you going first or me? You can always go first, Austin. I'll, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lazy lover. Shout out to Rebel. <laughs> uh, now, I... To tell you the truth, I don't really think it matters if I'm in win now or if I'm rebuilding, whatever whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm going to take Derrick Henry pr- pretty confidently here. Ooh, I like it. I like it. All right. How about two more? And we'll wrap this show up. T. Higgins or Tyrone T. Tracy? T. Quick answer. Go Tigers. From the Clemson grad. I didn't even need to hear the rest of the Clemson's, trade. Clemson's in trouble right now. So Yeah, I, I'd, I'd right. go T. I'd go T, but it's closer than it should be. Just need to get into that portal. Miami's uh, Miami's got the tiebreaker against you, so you better I hope know. lose again. <laughs> well, they need to lose. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Pitt, we got Pitt this weekend. That's a, that's pretty much mm. the season here. Narduzzi going to get you. Uh, all right. Tyrone Tracy, Ricky Pearsall, and a one. We've already said if we, if we can get the one for Tracy, we would. You getting a little Pearsall on top? Tracy, Wait, so Pearsall. You, you trade the one to get Tracy, Tracy and, and Pearsall? Pearsall? Sure. What do we think? I mean... I'd say I left it up to Mr. Pearsall. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> left it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on myself. Yeah, there, there he is. There he is. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap this show up. We appreciate you, Austin. Great filling in. Make sure you follow Austin on the Twitters. You at already are Austin Abbott FF two B's two T's two F's for your pleasure. For your pleasure. Make sure you go check out that Patreon from Austin as well. A lot of good stuff going down in, in, in the great mind of, of Austin Abbott over there. You can come check us out on the on the discords. There's a free and a five dollar holler one that you get with with the Patreon subscription. You get an extra episode every week. Uh, you get, you know, access to the the premium discord where you get a little more inside information with, with us and, and a little more direct contact with us as long as, as well as hey we're we're firing up the drafts again here soon. We're gonna put ADP. We got all sorts of good stuff coming down the pipeline. So make sure you do that. Uh, and go to revelrybootco.com and, and grab, a, grab a tea if you want a different way to support the team. Five-star review. If you have not yet, please do so. Help your boys out, especially if Tap you're it in. freeloading son of a gun. Hit us with the five-star. At least you could do. At least you could do. Go to both Spotify and iTunes. Just so hook your boys up. Hook it up. All right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.